So this video is going to quickly cover using the THAT1646 Outsmarts board, which is available from SparkFun and I think also DigiKey and a few others for, I think it's about 20 bucks, not, not a lot of money, uh, to generate a uh, balanced square wave signal. And the reason I had a need for a balanced square wave signal is because I'm designing um, a balanced uh, 6L6 GC tube amplifier that doesn't have a phase inverter, so it can't be fed by a conventional sing single-ended source. And I wanted to do square wave testing uh, to test the stability of my negative feedback. Um, so yeah, so that's how I arrived at the requirement to make a balanced square wave. And um, I tried to use kind of a resistive uh, voltage divider because my signal generator is floating. Um, and so I tried to use two relatively low value resistors tied to ground um, for, from each side of the signal generator, but that didn't work in the end. The performance was kind of unacceptable with regards to the noise and stuff like that. So uh, I didn't end up doing that. And this is the solution I arrived at instead. Um, so yeah, there's not too much to say about it. I'm gonna first kind of uh, show how I've got this hooked up, which is just the standard way you would hook this up according to the hookup guide on the website. So let's just really quickly go through that. Um, I'll zoom in on the, 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 the board here. So I've got it, um, this is the THAT1646 Outsmarts board right here. Um, and it takes plus and minus uh, DC voltage. I've got it hooked up here, um, this being plus, this being minus, uh, from just a normal DC uh, lab power supply, benchtop supply. And then also here is the input from the SIGGEN, um, which I've kind of rigged up a janky coax here um, and a BNC connector. I will say that uh, the hookup guide does imply that the signal generator and the uh, ground of the power supply should be the same ground. So I have off screen, you can't really see it, but I have tied together the ground of my signal generator, which is normally floating to the ground of the power supply. So the whole thing is grounded as such. Um, then here I've just got my two, uh, two scope uh, probes hooked up to um, the uh, T and R outputs, which are our two signal outputs. And then I have ground, I'm actually grabbing ground over here because it was more convenient on this uh, XLR breakout board. And then both the scope grounds are connected to that. So um, a very simple setup, all, yeah, all you need to run this thing is a uh, positive and minus supply. That is of course a bipolar supply. So you do need positive and negative voltages and a ground. And then um, the input from wherever you're taking the signal. And yeah, very simple uh, hookup for that. And of course this thing is meant to be used to add, um, to like create a balanced output from a single ended source. So maybe like you could use it internally if you had gear that wanted a balanced input and you only had a single ended source or you could use it to add balanced output i think this will be the more common usage to add balanced output to a source that is single ended so if you had like a cd player or something that only had a single ended output and you wanted to convert it to balanced you would use this board and add it in there um, probably you already have a, a dc supply rail that you can just tap into this thing draws very little current the amount of current it's drawing right now doesn't even register on uh, the ammeter of my cheap, uh, my cheap DC uh, benchtop supply, so very, very low current draw. And yeah, so the waveform it produces, um, it's being fed right now with a pulse wave, actually, from my SIGGEN, that is a 600 millivolt pulse wave. Um, one odd thing I've observed about this is this thing does not really like to pass square waves. I'll just say that, say that out front. Um, so you may encounter issues using it for this purpose. I chose the, this uh, board in particular because it actually, um, the data sheet from the, from the company that makes it, THAT Corporation, actually gives it pretty good bandwidth for an audio device. And of course, to reproduce a good square, square wave, one of the main things you need is bandwidth because a square wave is the fundamental and all of its harmonics extending in theory, you know, infinitely high in frequency. And so a normal audio device that cuts off at 20K or whatever um, is not going to pass a square wave very well. And that's why it's hard to generate a square wave using a normal balanced audio source. Um, you're gonna lose a lot of that high frequency, but um, 
So this thing does pass a pretty nice looking square wave actually for an audio device. You can see it looks pretty damn square on the scope. Um, and it is pretty good. It's definitely good enough in my opinion for testing out um, for testing out a tube amplifier, for example. And in fact, I think there are some people who advocate that square waves for tube amplifier testing should be limited in their high frequency response, just you know, to make it a more realistic and less brutal test. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think that you know, it's I think to me it looks at least that this square wave is more than good enough for uh, for square wave testing of a tube amplifier, and you know, no tube amplifier will pass a square wave that looks nearly as good at the output, at least if it has negative feedback. So yeah, I think more more than good enough square wave. Um, however, there is a quirk of this. Right now, the signal generator is set to output a pulse wave. And in theory, a pulse wave and a square wave shouldn't be any different, but I'll show you what happens when I change the waveform output to a square wave. So this is what my signal generator calls a pulse wave. It is at 50% duty cycle, so it is it should be in theory the same as a square wave. But here's the sign. But if I change it to a square wave, look, it starts out looking really good. It looks the same pretty much. But after a second or after a few seconds, it actually takes um, a fair bit of time but the, the, the THAT 1646, after some amount of time, just refuses to continue passing the square wave for some reason. Um, it's actually going pretty well now. And it lasts long enough that you could definitely, you know, you could definitely take a measurement and just record your scope screen. Um, but here we go, and we lost it. Um, so it will output a square wave for like 15 seconds sometimes, but after a certain amount of time passing the square wave, it just craps out. And I think maybe the reason for that is that my signal generator, the square wave setting, actually generates a real square wave, like with much more high frequency content. And I think the pulse setting might generate a lower quality square wave with less high frequency content. And maybe it's possible that the real square wave out of the signal generator is just too brutal for this little thing and it goes into some sort of a protection mode or something. Or maybe it just goes over current or something, I don't know. But for whatever reason, the true square wave um, will work for a little bit and then it'll stop. There, and it, it, takes, it has some recovery time, which is interesting. I wonder if this is actually related to like, I mean, I don't know, but it seems to have some recovery time because if you, if you switch it quickly back and forth, well, first of all, it does this when you switch to the sine wave and then it'll only last for a little bit. Uh, but if you leave it on the sine wave for a long time, then switch it back to square wave, it'll hold the square wave for longer. If anyone understands at all what causes this, please let me know. I'm very curious. It doesn't make any sense to me. I thought this thing was just some simple, like, you know, op amps and resistors inside of that little IC. And this seems like kind of a weird, complex behavior. But anyways, uh, suffice to say, the pulse wave uh, from, my, from my generator works fine. So I can't guarantee that the square wave from your generator won't cause a similar problem to the one that mine causes, but the other solution I've arrived at is just to run it in sign for about a minute, then switch it quickly to square, stop, freeze the screen of the oscilloscope, take your measurement um, before it craps out, and then you'll still have your fine, nice measurement. You just can't leave it running in square wave forever if your signal generator is overloading it. But for, for my purposes, the pulse wave works fine. And probably an alternative solution would just be to construct your own uh, high frequency filter at the output of your signal generator that cuts a little bit off of the leading edge of the square wave. And maybe that would allow you to run the square wave indefinitely into the THAT 1646. But this is just the behavior that I've observed, um, that I've observed with this thing. And another thing I will say is that it only tolerates a range of input voltages. In my experience, 100 to 600 millivolts seems to work the best. I'll show you what happens if I take it above. Uh, if I take it above 600 millivolts, it will work for a little bit, kind of, but then usually it'll just, yep, yeah, it'll also stop. So, and once you go back down to 600, it'll come back up. So, yeah, so that's um, another little quirk. Just make sure you have the right output voltage. I think another thing I've noticed, let me just see if this is still the case, but is that the um, waveforms aren't exactly super symmetrical. Let's go to the leading edge of one of these. 
and zoom it in even more. Actually, they look pretty good right now. In the past, I have observed that the top one, the one that's in blue, was um, was a little bit, let's see if I can get them positioned such that you can see it. And they look pretty identical now. In the past, I have observed sometimes when looking at them that one side of the uh, square wave, like one phase, is uh, seems to have a little bit of a slower ramp up than the other phase. But actually, right now, they look pretty damn symmetrical. So um, I don't know, something else you might want to look at um, if you're using this to generate a balanced square wave. But overall, I think this works pretty well. You just have to be aware of the pitfall that sometimes it doesn't like to handle square waves. Um, and you, there's, I think there are a few workarounds as I discussed, but overall this thing works really well for $20 if you ever have a need to generate balanced uh, square wave signals for any testing or whatnot, I think this is a good solution. Um, and it will also do triangle waves and other waveforms, which I think is kind of cool too. If we go to triangle and I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. I don't have these centered anymore, they are in fact. Yep, so you get a triangle wave too. This one's like bouncing around a little bit. My scope kind of sucks. But anyways, you can do triangle waves and stuff like that as well if you want to. But yep, I'm using it for the square wave and I think pretty good results from a little $20 thing. So yep, that's gonna be the end of this video. Um, if anyone knows anything about this uh, THAT1646 and can explain why it runs the square wave for a little bit and then kind of like just refuses to pass any signal at all, um, please let me know. I would be very curious, but um, that's really all I have to say about this. And it'll probably be uh, featured in my upcoming video, although I'm also considering buying a, um, a uh, amplitude and phase um, meter, like an amplitude, yeah, gain and phase meter, that's what they're called. I'm considering buying a gain and phase meter to be able to actually plot the phase shift of amplifiers at very high frequency and maybe do some more in-depth design to really kind of optimize as much as possible um, and do it in a more mathematical way rather than the kind of square wave approach which is a little bit run and gun kind of you know it's like a graphical approach it's not as you know rigorous I guess although people have very good results with it um, but anyways that's uh, it for this video and yep if you have anything uh, please leave a comment